All right, this is the recap of Season 2, Episode 5 of Portrait Artist of the Year, which you can see on YouTube. You just have to search there. You also can see it on Prime Video. And this particular episode does have a watercolor artist, so I'm really excited about that. I will have spoilers, however. So if you want to not know who wins each one of these episodes, don't watch. Stop watching. So let's get started. I have some thoughts first. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. Today we're going to do a recap of season two, episode five of Portrait Artist of the Year, and there will be spoilers. I also, before we begin the program, I just want to review the format for people who might be joining us who aren't familiar with it. Here's what it looks like. There are three models, and each one of those three models has four artists painting them. From those four artists, each one of those models will pick one of those pieces of art to take home. Meanwhile, as we near the end of the program, the judges from these 12 artists pick three finalists for this episode, and only one will go forward into what they call the semifinals. So that's how it works. Each episode, there are 12 artists. From those 12 artists, three are selected officially, one goes forward to the semifinals. The semifinals will have three people in at the end of it. Uh, at the end, so that will probably be episode seven. Remember, this is episode five. So there will be th this many people. There'll be seven different people in the fi the semifinals. From that, we'll, they will find three people, and those three people will compete for the final prize. The final prize is a commission portrait of the actor Alan Cummings. Before we start this episode, I just want to bring something up. I'm going to talk about it in the episode, but I want to let you know that in this episode, there's a watercolor painter. Yes. Kind of thrilled about that because so far in the program, we've only had one. And this guy, this guy in this episode, I think is really, really, really good. Um, so keep your eye out for that. And the other thing, which is sort of starting to get at my nerves, is we've talked about this before, that the judges are not necessarily looking for good painting. All these painters are good painters. They're looking for something different, and they say they want something different. Well, in this particular episode, one of the participants is an artist who does the portrait in fabric by stitching. And I have a lot of feelings about that. Yes, it's different but it is called Landscape Portrait Artist of the Year. Artist of the Year. Yeah. Doesn't say sower of the year. Anyway, you can see where I'm leaning on this. I'm trying to be open-minded about it because I think mixed media is great. There's a pastel painter in here, of course, acrylic and oil, and we have a watercolor painter. We've had pencil artists. We've had collage artists. Something about the stitchery Something about the stitchery, to be frank, here's what it is. Something about the stitchery made me feel that some, another participant, a worthy participant, was therefore not considered. And I don't feel like that is fair. But it's not my program, but it is a program that gets under my skin like crazy, especially when it gets to the judges. So anyway, remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and ask a friend to join my YouTube channel or to watch these, because that would be great for me. And now let's do the recap. Oh, and there will be spoilers. Definitely spoilers. All right, let's get started. All right, first an overview. This is what the actual venue looks like. It's split up into three. It's a circle split up into three sections. Each section has one model and four painters. And each one of those sections is sort of decorated to have something to do with the model to show their personality in some way. So let's look at the first model. The first model up is named Jilly Cooper. She brought a picture of her dog with her. It's a lovely painting. She is an author and has written something like, I don't know, they might have said something like 40 books or something. So she must be very well known. They also talked about the setting that they set her up in. And the orange was put there as a challenge. Here's the actual setting. 
the orange background was put there as a challenge because, as we know, lighter colors will come forward, darker colors will recede. So the orange is going to kind of fight the figure. It's going to want to come forward. So just to let you know that they are also, that's what they're doing with the challenge here. All right, the next person up is named Melvin Bragg. He is a broadcaster. He must have been broadcaster, my guess is, like for, for something like the BBC for like 45 years or something. Look at those classic chiseled features. Whew, oh my goodness. So uh, that that is a face that you can just see all the bone structure going on there. So that's going to be interesting. Certainly looks like a friendly fellow. They put him in a setting to show that his interests. Uh, I guess he really likes Beethoven and Elvis Presley, and I couldn't tell what some of the other things were behind him. But anyway, that's why those different props are there, and a deep burgundy behind him. So nice setting. The next model is named Daniel Roche, and he is an actor. He's only 14 years old, so he's extremely young. And they placed him on a couch with a slightly striped background behind him, and he got set up in somewhat of a repose, and he is looking at his iPad. So he is, of all the models, he was definitely the most willing to be still. So those are our three models. And now, and remember, the participants don't, don't get to choose which one they paint. They get, you get, you get who you get. All right, so the first one up is Melvin Bragg. Remember, this is the broadcaster. Now, here's what the painters did. That's painter number one, who I think got a, a really good likeness. It, it looks like a really good drawing. And yet, of course, it is a painting. He worked from both the photograph and from the model. His self-portrait, which determined he could be in the program, was exquisite. Remember, they only have four hours here, which I guess is a short time for painters who put on layers and layers and layers. I'm not familiar with that. So here's a close-up of it. That's a really, really good drawing. I just wish that he had been a little bit braver about slapping on some juicy paint. It, it's just my preference. I love to see broad strokes and and thick paint, and, and this just looks a little bit too much like a sketch for me. And remember, Melvin gets to pick one of these to go home, so I'm curious to know which one he picks to go home, but I already know. All right, this is the second entrant. The, now, one thing about recapping this program is they often will show their favorites during the process, and they don't show the ones that they don't favor. So this was on the screen for like the smallest amount of a second, and was barely spoken about. I really do like the painting. I can't say that it's a likeness, but there's a lot of good painting going on there. Look at all the different skin tones going on, and it it it, it looks like a well well experienced painter. Now the next one, I spent a lot of time talking about this gal, and I think there's a reason because she was so disciplined. She had a great uh, sketch. She paint she probably spent way over an hour on her pencil sketch. It was fantastic, and I wish she had stopped there. When she started to apply paint, everything got very, very stiff, and it sort of doesn't, when you stand very far away from it and see it, it looks like it's painted, but when you come up close, all I see are shapes. Kind of like, you know those old master paintings where they make faces and things out of vegetables? Have you ever seen that? It's kind of weird. That's what this did for me. But they, needless to say, they loved this painting. She's very young. I'm sure she will only improve with age. This is the one that he chose to take home with him. So he liked it too. So let's take a look at, this is now the stitch artist who also did Melvin. And as I said earlier in my intro, I don't know how to judge this. How, how, how are you supposed to judge stitching as opposed to painting? I, it, it's impossible. Um, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, I don't see a likeness. I see something that's vaguely similar. Um, oh, gosh, yeah, I, I guess I'm speechless. I, if you're a sewer, <laughs> or more open-minded than I am, please let me know what you think of this. I, th I know I'm being harsh, but as I said at, at the intro, I do feel like when they 
bring someone in who's either a stitcher or like, like doing a linoleum prints or um, there was one guy they brought on for Landscape Painter of the Year who was adding dung to his paintings. I mean, that's just gimmicky stuff. And it's taking someone else's place who's a worthy painter. And I, I don't like that. So we will move on. Although she's going to come up later. She doesn't, she doesn't, nothing against her personally. She's lovely. I just don't see how that makes it an even playing field. All right, Melvin Bragg pick. Which one did he pick? Oh, I already told you. He picked the one which was the one where the, the person spent a great deal of time on the drawing, but I, I just don't feel like the painting is like hugely successful. I guess it's okay. I would have picked the first one that we saw, which was um, looked very much like it was painted a, a painted sketch. But um, what do I know? Again, and the reason I'm saying this is because I do think that the painting has to be a good painting no matter what wall it's on, not just the wall of the person's home that it looks like. All right, next up is Daniel Roche, the actor, and let's see what he has going on. All the painters were really strong in his section. I think this this is uh, this was the youngest of the people in his section, but I, I just think she did a really, really great job. It's not complete, and you know how I feel about that by now, that I like things anchored in. I just would have brought the shoulders. I wouldn't have painted them. I just need an extension of the line to anchor the figure in so it is an island surrounded by oceans. But that's, that's me. It's a really good painting. This fella, oh boy, I do like this fella's painting. The way he went about it was he did a sketch just in black and the color of the canvas, and then he blocked in with gray and white, and then slowly built the color from there. He has got a lot of training behind him. I mean, there's, you know, he, he has that old-fashioned kind of training that the old masters have. So, uh, you know, he certainly needs to be honored for that. It's, and also the figure not only looks like the, the model, not only looks like Daniel Roche, but also it looks relaxed. And I think that's a challenge when you're doing a portrait you want a figure to look like they're comfortable in the setting. This was the pastel artist who, and I think this is charming. I don't know how this takes four hours to do. That is a mystery to me. One thing I did notice though in this particular episode is almost everybody painted, and I know this is pastel so it doesn't apply to this one, painted with tiny, tiny brushes. I mean brushes that were probably the biggest one was like a size 10. Yeesh, I don't get it. Pick up a brush. Anyway, this is the final one for Daniel's heat, and I uh, I love this painting. This this gal is uh, a professional. She wasn't the only professional of the group, but she was certainly somebody who 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 has the goods. She's she uh, yeah. She, I mean, she nailed the likeness. She's got. She's simplified the forms, and she's cre and created expression. I also like the parts that she left unfinished. That was a creative decision, probably because of time to some degree, but I think also it was a creative decision. So this would have been my favorite of these four. Um, there's something that was slightly informal about it. You can see some gestural work there. So let's see which one Daniel picked to, to take home. Remember, this has nothing to do with the final judging. This is just what they get for the day, you know, door prize. This was the one he decided to take home. That's a good choice. I think this, again, this is a good painting, whether it's on the wall of Daniel because it looks like him, or on any wall. It's a really, really good portrait and very, very complete. Nothing was left unattended to. It went down a little bit further in terms of, um, he's act you could actually see his hands holding the iPad. So this person did a hard day's work. All right, the next model is Jilly Cooper, the author, who, remember, they put in front of a challenging orange background. I love this painting. It really speaks to me. I love that it's unfinished and yet anchored in. It's showing a certain, I don't want to say weariness, because she had a tendency to kind of slouch, and frankly, I do too, but she's comfortable, and you could see the gestures of the paint. I, I just, I like this painting. Look at that. Oh, gosh. It says everything that you needed to say without saying more than you needed to say. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of this painting. 
And I do, in this one, I do think that the orange background works really, really well. Now, of course, they could put in any background they want it to. But in this case, doesn't the orange play nicely against the tones in her face? I think it does. And look at the neutrals down there on the throat and the neutrals of the hair. There's a lot of color going on and a lot of care in the mix of those neutrals. So carefully done. Carefully examined, carefully done, and yet not tight. So, yeah, I, as you can see, I'm a fan of this painting. All right, let's see what the next one is. The next one up is a younger painter. I don't think she got a likeness at all. She's working in a fairly big format, so she had a lot of real estate to cover. And she doesn't have the kind of training that some of these painters have. Of course, I'm sympathetic to that because I don't have any training. <laughs> but, but I don't think this was the strongest. So let's see what the next one is. And, and then we will also see which one Jilly decides to take home. All right, next one up. Yay, it's the watercolor painter. So I want to spend a little time on the watercolor painter. Isn't that beautifully done? Oh my gosh, it's just beautifully done. This is, this is what attracts me to watercolor. The fact that you can see the actual water working for you. You know, you can say that it's not perfect. That's what I like about water, is watercolor. It is not perfect. It's going to leave imperfections on the paper. You have to be strategic. There were times when he had to sit for 10 minutes waiting for something to dry so he could continue. I don't know why he wasn't allowed to have a hair dryer. I would have insisted on that because you can really lose the flow when you have to sit and wait. But he really attended to just about everything. I think he got a likeness. And like many watercolors, it's free and not overworked. And well, and yay for watercolor. It's just so nice to see a watercolorist here. We've had one other watercolorist in this season of painters, but he worked with very, very flat washes. You know, so his washes were completely without any marks, which is not what I find the most exciting about a watercolor. Judges didn't talk much about this at all. They, I just don't think they'll ever see watercolor as being anything other than, you know, um, watered down soup. I don't know why they don't like it. All right, this is the one, uh, last one of the four in the heat for Jilly. Uh, she's not a professional, but she does take a lot of classes at some prestigious place. I didn't recognize the name of it. And so she's working on portraits quite a bit. Um, I think it's a really good job. But we'll, we'll get a better look at it in a minute, although it was really hard to get from the screen. So let's see which one did Jilly's pick. Well, Jilly picked... Jilly picked this one. She real she she didn't explain any reasons for it that I can remember. She just really responded to it. Um, maybe because it had the the dog portrait in it. Although that was so unresolved, I found that a little weird. You know when you have a shape. There's a close up of it. But when you have a shape in a painting, like in this particular case, the shape of the dog in that frame looked a lot like an elephant. There are times when you can have a shape in a painting that's so unresolved that it becomes a real hindrance, and I kind of wish that that had been addressed. But on the other hand, let's look at the positive. She's got some beautiful color value swap outs. Look at that bit of cerulean, slightly cerulean blue or cerulean gray happening on the right hand side of her hair. That's nicely done. Uh, like the lost and found edges, of course, the informality of it, and a lot of juicy painting. All right, now the three semifinalists. These are the people that they're going to pick from to go on to. Only one will go on to the finals. Yes, yes, they loved the stitchery. They loved the stitchery. Again, because they find, they're looking for something that's different, and this is definitely different. They were saying over and over again that if she had enough time, things would have been completely, uh, would have, it, there would have been a different uh, outcome, you know, the, in terms of the image. But quite frankly, the piece that this artist submitted in order to be on the program was even more unfinished than this, and she had all the time in the world. So I'm finding this a bit gimmicky, but remember, this is a television program, and so for entertainment value, maybe this is what they need to do. It is questionable for me. 
All right, the other person they picked was this one, which I find delightful. And I especially find delightful, do you see that blue streak that's happening indicating the shirt? That's what I mean by anchoring in. You don't have to finish it, but you need to establish that the head is on something. You know, heads don't float in space. <laughs> When heads are floating in space, that drives me nuts. Sometimes people do those pet portraits, you know, and, and they'll um, they'll just take it down to the neck and then they'll as if and, and and just fill in all the background even around that so that it looks like a one of those taxidermed heads. Uh, it just it's a pet peeve of mine. It leaves me a little bit unsettled. I like things to be even or like I always say, anchored in. So let's take a look at the third semifinalist. And each one, each, each one of these painters, I do think, in this particular episode, was a strong painter. And that's not always the case. So the third is this one, which, which I kind of love. Now, I didn't get a whole picture of it. It does go down to about her mid-torso. Because I think that green plant that's in her shirt plays against that orange really nicely and enhances the whole painting. Um, I'm glad I wasn't a judge because I, I, there were at least three that I would have put forward into the finals. They weren't crazy about this one. And I, once again, I can't remember their reasons why. Not always, they always have strong reasons for what they like and less strong reasons for what they don't like. Uh, I don't know the, the world that they live in, but they see a lot of imagery and when something is too regular for them, they are dismissive of it. So she, they would be completely dismissive of me. Now, the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Well, I was surprised I, I, I was surprised and not surprised at who the winner was because I, I could pick at least three different three or four different people who could have won. I wanted the watercolorist to win. You know, in some ways, I think that was the hardest medium. They also put the entire format of where, where the model was sitting and, and considered that Anyway, I'm not a judge, and they picked instead, as you already know, they picked from these three. Oh, that stitchery one. Makes me nuts. And this is the finalist. And you can see her self-portrait that got her onto the program behind. So she likes to leave a minimal background. She's a really, really good painter. So nice choice. It's gonna I'm I'm really yeah, I'm looking forward to her painting in the finals. Although Hashtag Joe is always right. I think I already know who the winner is, and I've stated my reasons for that, I think, back in Season 2, Episode 2. So we will go on to Episode 6, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.